All right, guys, so this is our extra credit lesson. And we'll call it lesson, let's see, we're on 5.1b. All right, so it's basically kind of like a glorified form of the stuff that we learned in lesson 5.1. Um, so within this video, you're going to get 10 points if you just take the notes. You'll also get 10 points for doing the exercises. Okay, and both of those will just go in as homework points. Um, also, some of it will appear on the test next time as an extra credit test question as well. So let's talk about what this lesson is going to be all about. We're going to learn basically a shortcut for multiplying binomials or for multiplying binomials of the form of that. Okay? That's our goal. Now, the shortcut itself is pretty long. But without the shortcut, trust me, the, uh, the alternative is even longer. So the shortcut, even though it's a little bit long, is still, believe it or not, a shortcut. So let's go ahead and start off with something basic here. Let's start off with a plus b to the first power. Okay, what does that equal? Well, anything to the first power is just that. Okay, um, I'm also going to draw attention to the coefficients. So notice that. There's no number there, so that usually means it's a 1, right? So let's keep that in mind. All right, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to do a plus b. And we're going to do that to the second power. Okay? Um, now, we learned how to do that in class. Um, let's see here. And what we learned about that in class was that you square the first term. You square the last term, and then you multiply these two terms together and put a 2 in the front. And once again, I'm going to draw our attention toward the coefficients. Okay? Um, retrospect, I think I want to throw something else on here if I can. Let's see if I can do that bring this down a little bit. Um, I'm going to go backwards, actually. Let's do a plus b to the 0 power. Now, this is something that we haven't talked about in this class very much, but for now, I'm just going to say, go ahead and take my word for it. Anything to the 0 power equals 1. So it doesn't matter what's in here. If you raise it to the 0 power, it's 1. There's one exception to that, and that's if what's in here is 0, but in this case, that's not what we're looking at. We're looking at A and B. So we'll go ahead and ignore that. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and do one more step forward, though. And what we're doing is we're just going to stop after this one, and we're going to look for a pattern. Because after this one, it gets to be a little bit tedious. But the pattern is what we're going to really try to draw out of this. So let's go ahead and do A plus B to the third power. Okay, I'm going to do that one on a new piece of paper, a new slide here. We have a plus b cubed, right? Now, as you guys know, that means a plus b times a plus b times a plus b. Now, we just did this one before that. a plus b times a plus b. Isn't that a plus b squared? Right? And we already know what that one is. That was a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, right? So that means we just need to multiply that by a plus b now. And so we're going to go ahead and use our handy dandy box method for this. This is a cubed. This is 2a squared b. This is a b squared. This is a squared b, this is 2ab squared, and this is b cubed. 
and our like terms are on the diagonal. Once again, we have coefficients here, right? So 1 and 2 make 3. So we have a cubed to begin with, plus 2 and 1 makes 3, right? And we'll combine these like terms, a and b squared, a and b squared, 2 and 1 makes 3. And then finally we have b cubed. So that. So let's back it up a little bit and write that one down. So we have a cubed plus, uh, what's the 3, right? It was 3 a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed. And once again, I want to draw our attention to the coefficients. Okay. Now here's here's the first thing I, I want you guys to notice. There's there's two patterns here, or maybe maybe three patterns that we want to take note of. First of all, let's look at the a's. Look at your a's. It starts with a cubed, which is the power we started with, right? And after that, every time it goes down by one, three, two. 1, and then none, or you could say 0. The same thing's true up here. 2, we start off with that power there, right? 2, 1, none. Start off with 1, right? So a to the first, no a, and then 0. So we have this pattern where if you have a plus b to the nth power, whatever that power may be, it always starts with n, and then it goes down by one power every time. So subtract 1, then subtract 2, etc., until there's no more a's left. Let's take a look at the b's. The b's actually do the same exact thing, but on the opposite end. It starts at 3, then it goes down to 2, then 1, then none. So it starts at b to the n on that side, and then it goes down in this direction, etc. Right? The final pattern is for the coefficients, the numbers in front. And that one's really kind of complicated. But for that, I'm just going to write something which you don't know what it means yet, but you will in a minute. We're going to call it Pascal's triangle. Okay, Pascal's triangle. So let me show you what Pascal's triangle is. Um, I'm going to come back up here now, and I'm going to erase all this stuff. But I'm going to leave the coefficients. It's a little bit hard to see the pattern that's happening with the coefficients with all this other stuff there. So I'm just going to erase all the variables and their powers and the pluses until I have just those coefficients left. Now, there's a pattern going on there. Okay. First of all, you'll notice it always starts with 1. Okay. The next thing you'll notice is this number here. You can think of that in two ways. One way is that number is basically this number here, right? 2, 2, or 3, 3. So the second number is always going to match your power. But here's a better way to think about it. This number is always the 2 above it added together. Like 1 plus 1 is 2, right? Check this out. 1 plus 2 is 3. 2 plus 1 is 3. Now, why is that helpful to us? Because that makes it a lot easier to get the next one. Like, what if I wanted to do the next row? Like, let's say I wanted to do a plus b to the fourth power. Well, I don't have to multiply all this out right now to get what I need. I know it's going to start with 1, and then I know the next number is going to be this plus the 3, which is 4. The next number is going to be this plus this, which is 6. This one's going to be this plus this, which is 4. And then when there's nothing else to add the last number to here, we just know it's going to end in a 1. So I already know what the coefficients are going to be. And based on that pattern, we also know what the a's are going to be, right? 
the a starts with whatever power we have. So it's going to be a to the fourth, right? And then it goes down one every time. And then no a at the end. The b's do the same thing, but coming from the opposite direction. So this is going to be b to the fourth, b to the third, b squared, and b. That was a heck of a lot faster than using the box method, wasn't it? Okay. So there's our pattern. Now Pascal's triangle was this thing that you guys see right here. That's called Pascal's triangle. So let me show you guys how we could continue this pattern to, to find even more. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna clean up my board a little bit. Let's do another one really quick. I'm going to clean that up. All right. So where we left off with was a plus b to the fourth power, right? And we know that it was 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. So here's what I'm going to encourage you guys to do. Is I want you guys to, you don't have to, I can't make you, but I would like you to pause the video and see if you can find the numbers that go in this next row. Here's what you guys should have gotten. Ready? 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. The next thing I'd like you guys to do is I'd like you to put your A's in there. Now I'll get you started. The first A is an A to the fifth. Okay? Go ahead and pause the video and do that. So this is what you guys should have got. Now put your B's in there. I'll get you started. It starts on this end with that power. Pause the video and see if you can do the rest. You guys should have gotten this. And then, of course, we connect them all with pluses at the end, right? There you go. I'm going to go ahead and just leave our purple marks in there, and then we're going to leave the red. I'm going to... Now, this time, I want you guys to do the next one. I want you guys to do A plus B to the sixth power completely on your own. Pause the video and see what you guys get. Do all the coefficients and all the letters. And that's what you guys should have gotten there. Your coefficients should have been 1, 6, 15, 20, 15, 6, 1. Your A's should have started with a 6 power and went down by 1 every time. And your B's should have started with a 6 power on the other end and went down by 1 as we go to the left. And there's your answer. So as you guys can see, it's still a little bit of work, but it's a heck of a lot faster than trying to foil everything out. Okay? Okay, so now we know how to do a plus b to any power, right? So if I was to throw at you guys, do a plus b to the ninth, here's how you would go about it. Now you guys already have a lot of the work done on your notes so far, but let's just pretend we we're starting from scratch. If I saw this, I would think, okay, I would start with this, one, one. I would just start doing Pascal's triangle. You don't need to rewrite this triangle. Uh, 6 minus 21, 35, 35, I believe, 21, and then 1. Oh, wait, I skipped 1. Seven. And I'm going to go again. Seven and one makes eight. Twenty-eight. Fifty-six. Seventy. Fifty-six. You also notice there's a pattern here in the fact that it's symmetrical. You know, one, eight, twenty-eight, fifty-six, seventy, fifty-six, twenty-eight, eight, one. Same number, just backwards. And I know I need to go one more. 
The reason I know I need to go one more is because I want the ninth power, right? And I know that I'm at the ninth power when I get to this num the second number being 9. So this is a lot of work, granted. And maybe for you guys, adding might not be as quick as it is I'm doing here on the board. Or maybe it is, or maybe you're faster, who knows. But there you go. So I know that. So now that I've got my coefficients, I don't really have enough space here. It's kind of tight. So what I would do is I would start like this. I would just go 1, a to the ninth plus 9. You know, the a is going to go down by a power. And then it's going to start with b to the first. a goes down a power. b comes up 1. And so on. A goes down a power, B comes up one. A goes down a power, B comes up one. And I'm out of space, so I'm just going to put dot, dot, dot. But you guys have the idea. Now, that's the, that's the first part of our lesson. I just want to let you guys understand what Pascal's triangle is. Okay, it's this giant thing here. And it just goes on forever. You just go as far as you need to. I also want you guys to be aware of the pattern with the exponents and whatnot. But what about when it's not A and B anymore? What about whenever it's something else, like X plus 3? Okay. And let's say I want to do X plus 3 to the 4th power. Okay. So we'll call this example 1. And this is what your exercises will look like, okay? So let's do example one. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at Pascal's triangle. Now, I've done this a lot, so I've, I'm just going to go ahead and cheat and go back to Pascal's triangle. And since I want to do um, to the fourth power, I know that I want to look at the fourth row which is right there, okay? I know that's the fourth power of one because the second number starts with four, right? So it's one, four, six, four, one, okay? So I'm gonna write that out. One, I'm gonna leave a little space, four, six, four, and one. I know that those are gonna be my coefficients. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with my x. I'm gonna make it x to the fourth, and then I'm just gonna go down one every time, x third, x squared, x, last one does not have an x. And then I'm going to start with this guy here, the 3, but I'm going to start with that on the other end. It's going to be 3 to the 4th power. I'm going to put a little time symbol there so it doesn't look like 13. 3 to the 3rd power. Notice it's going to go down one every time. 3 to the 2nd, 3 to the 1st, and then no 3 at all. So there it is. Now you might think, okay, well, I'm done. Well, I'm not really. We, we do need to simplify now because we have numbers instead of just letters in here. So this is just going to be x to the fourth, right? But this next one, we have 4 times 3, which is going to be 12x cubed. The next one, this is 9. 3 squared is 9. And 9 times 6 is 54. And then the x squared just comes down. And so on. This one is... 3 times 3 times 3 is 27, times 4, what is that, 80 plus 20 is 108, bring down your x, plus 3 to the 4th power, I already know that, you might have to think a little bit more, but that's 81, there's our final answer. So, it is a little bit tedious, but it's definitely not as tedious as actually having to foil it out, okay? I want to show you one more example before I give you your exercises to do. Um, let's say I had 2x minus 5, and I wanted to raise that to the third power. Okay? So this is example 2. All right, so I want the third power, right? 
So I'm going to go back to Pascal's triangle. I'm going to look for the third row, and that would be this one. I know that's the third row because it starts with or the second number is a three. So it's one, three, three, one. Those are my coefficients. So I'm going to start off with one, three, three, and one. Then I'm going to take my first number here, 2x, and I'm going to raise it to the third power. I'm going to use parentheses, though, just so I don't forget I'm raising this whole thing to the third power, not just the x. So that's why you want to use parentheses. Then the 2x is going to go down by a power every time after that. And then the last one will have a 2x. Then we repeat. Now this is something new, so pay close attention to this. I'm going to start on this end with the second number, but notice this time I'm not going to put just 5. I'm actually going to put negative 5 because it's a minus, and that matters. And once again, I'm going to say put that in parentheses. So I'm going to start with negative 5 to the third power. And then it's going to be negative 5 to the second power. And then it's going to be negative 5 to the first power. And then no negative 5 at all. We'll put our pluses in there. Okay. So let's go ahead and work this one out. Now, 2x to the third power. Now, if you need me to show you that, I'll show you. But it means you're doing this. Now, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. And x times x times x is x to the third. So this is 8x to the third plus. Now, this one, we have 2x squared. That would be 4x squared if you square it. Then we have 3, and negative 5 to the first power is negative 5. So 3 times 4 is 12, and 12 times negative 5 is negative 60x squared. So we multiply all these numbers together. Continue the process. We have 3, 2x, negative 5 squared is going to be a positive 25. Squares cancel out negatives. So that's going to be 6 times 25. What would that be? 150. Last one. Negative 5 to the third power is, is negative 125. Oh, I'm just recording a lesson. No problem. And since here we have a plus a negative, that's just going to be a minus. So we don't need two signs there to put a minus. And that will be our final answer. So just something to be aware of as you're doing this. When you have a coefficient for any variable, you're cubing the whole thing, so you want to use parentheses. And also, if there's a minus, include that minus in the parentheses when you're doing your powers. And then you've got to simplify it afterwards. So I'll go ahead and post your practice problems for that. So the notes were worth 10 points. The practice problems will also be worth 10. I'm going to give you three of these things to do. switch these and that'll be it okay that's the end of it